This is one of Australia's premier horticultural destinations. It's the Australian Garden in Cranbourne and it's part of the Royal Botanic Gardens Victoria. And it is 15 hectares of incredible landscaped and cultivated gardens that celebrate Australian flora. It is such a special place. Botanic gardens like this one allow us to revel in the beauty of plants. And they're also centres of plant research. But increasingly, they are also places that are conserving and cultivating rare and threatened species for their future survival. Gosh, this garden is really filling out, isn't it? It's like well, a real forest. Yeah, well, 2006 planting, so they're, you know, they're starting to get a bit, of, a bit of age to them. Today, I'm meeting the manager of horticulture here, John Arnott, to learn a bit more about this new role that's been taken on by um, Botanic Gardens. Sure. It's, it falls under the banner of conservation horticulture. So we just think about the Victorian context. A, a third of the Victorian flora is afforded with some level of conservation significance. Wow. So that just means that there's a role for botanic gardens in the conservation, the preservation, to keep this flora intact. We're custodians. And so you're collecting plants and bringing them into gardens to, to grow in the cultivated collections? Indeed. I guess the comparison is captive breeding for zoos. Um, you know, it's, it's that thing, but it's for plants. While the display gardens feature a number of rare species, the real magic the, uh, is happening behind the scenes. Ah, oh, exciting. This is the glass house. It's really the engine room of the Botanic Gardens operations. And so you're propagating, these are rare species? Uh, look, there's a mix, but in amongst uh, this material is some really rare and threatened plant species, you know, things on the brink. Many of these have never been propagated before, so there's a bit of trial and error. We've found that using these plugs and propagating in situ, as it were... The, you know, the, so when you're actually out in the bush? Out, out in the field, um, popping the cutting material into the, into the plugs either immediately or that evening. It makes for some long nights. Um, we're getting some really, really good success. And you can see there's roots on that. And I, I imagine this is really precious plant material. You don't want to waste any. No, no, not at all. Well, this particular one is... Uh, it's Oleria astroloba, the marble daisy bush. Single population discovered in 1988 at the site of a marble mine. And when they did the environmental effects statement, they discovered this little plant and it actually stopped the mine from going ahead. So, you know, we're talking about a powerful little daisy here. Unreal. I reckon it'll look pretty nice in my garden. Oh, look, it's got great potential as a garden plant. It really does. It's highly ornamental. Of course, there are many reasons plants are rare. Some, like the marble daisy bush, are just inherently rare. They only occupy a tiny ecological niche. Then there's habitat loss to agriculture and urbanisation, as well as pest plants and animals, pathogens, our changing climate and bushfire. Yeah. While John and the horticulture team cultivate and care for these rare and endangered species, botanist Andre Messina works to identify plants at risk and go out and collect them. He's led field trips with expert teams to recover seeds and cuttings after the devastating black summer bushfires. G'day, Andre. G'day, Millie. How are you going? Yeah, it's good, thanks. I hear you've been uh, doing some rather wild collecting over the last little while. Yeah, we've had about 10 weeks out in East Gippsland and in the northeast of Victoria. And so they were areas that were really impacted by the fires? Yeah, so we've been uh, investigating those fire scar areas. And what did you end up finding? On Mount Buffalo, some of the things we found were the snow pradia, Lobelia gelida, which is this oh. little guy here. This occurs in alpine bogs, only known from Mount Buffalo and one other mountain range further south. It's a tiny thing, is it? Like, how rare is this plant in the wild? It's actually quite rare. It has a very small leaf, and so it doesn't like competition. So it, it likes to hang out in these pools, and the pools need to be not too wet and not too dry. So it's, it's a very, very specialised habitat that these are in. You don't want to say the word fussy, rare plant? Uh, no, <laughs> I don't think they're fussy. They're just more wimpy, I yeah. think. <laughs> I imagine that finding something like that could be quite challenging over a large area. Yeah, so we spent quite a few hours on Mount Buffalo on our hands and knees in, in, in these alpine bogs, getting very wet looking for this thing. So it's like full extreme botany. Yeah, so one of the other amazing trips was going down the Snowy River. And that's another really unique place. Six days on a raft with a team of eight scientists that and, is and horticulturalists. A, that's yeah. a trip of a lifetime, isn't it? Yeah. 
there's a range of quite interesting plants, one of them being the, the cliff westringia, this guy here. Cliff westringia? So, cliff that, westringia. That suggests where you maybe found it. The only way to see this is to go down the river and then climb up a cliff. So while we were there, we saw one or two plants with flowers, but mostly they're still recovering. We couldn't get any seed off this time around, um, but what we did do is take some cuttings to have plants growing here in the nursery. What do you guys hope you can really achieve for the rare plants of Vic? Um, so I guess, I guess what we're really hoping for is to have as much coverage of the rare and threatened species in ex situ conservation as possible, and, but to also have coverage across the species to have those range of sites so that we've got a genetically diverse collection. Ongoing work. So lots more abseiling and canoeing ahead. <laughs> I hope so. Well, this ultimately must be the point of all this work. You've got plants ready to go back in the ground. Plants ready for planting. That's the, that's the end point. Some of the material that we're propagating will end up in the conservation collection in the Australian Garden. We've uh, got a really lovely uh, multi-site conservation program called Care for the Rare, and we're distributing rare and threatened plants to regional bot botanic gardens across the state. And then what about wild plants? I mean, you're wild collecting. You know, is there a role there? Oh, absolutely. What we've got here is Callistamon ken morrisonii and Callistamon foresteri. Both from far east Gippsland, both oh. fire affected. And there's a community group in Mallacoota that are translocating these, these little babies back into the wild. It's incredibly satisfying work. It's an intrinsically important, uh, but you know, we don't want to lose species on our watch. Uh, and if you know, botanic gardens across the state, across the country, can contribute to that agenda, I think we're doing our job.